and bring it under a lid. Yes. But, but I couldn't, I can't therefore explain why Barclays are telling me what they're telling me, and, and, and that, that is on their, on their uh, I, I, can't, I can't explain it otherwise, because as I, as I've, and I, I'm happy for you to see the letter that they've, that they've sent me, I would ask Barclays. And you're as shocked first. as we are that they're putting this stuff out. I, I am shocked. I'm surprised. Okay. Andrew Lips. Um, Mr North, could you clarify, are you going to abolish cheque guarantee cards this year? The cheque guarantee scheme is actually closing at, I think it's the end of this month, isn't it? And what yes. will be the impact on cheque usage? What sort of cost and what sort of analysis have you done of what the impact will be on cheque usage? Well, we had, a, we had some consultants actually do uh, uh, an analysis last year. Um, was it last year or two years ago? And, and actually, we, we did actually, I think, set out uh, the findings of, of that analysis. I, I think it's in our, in our submission to, to you here at the Treasury Select Committee. Uh, I, I, honestly, I, can't, I don't have the details at the top of my head. So, so you have analysed the impact on charities of being unable to provide a cheque guarantee card for any of their cheque writers? Can, can, I, can I give a little bit of background on, on, on the cheque guarantee scheme? There are only two countries in the world that have it, the United Kingdom and Ireland. And in Ireland, uh, only 25% of debit cards are part of the scheme. And in Ireland, they are planning actually to close the scheme uh, by 2016. Uh, so basically, a cheque guarantee is not seen anywhere else in the world as being an important uh, pillar of a, of a cheque system. And, and so, that, that may well be the case, Mr North, but yeah. the point is that what we're looking at here is, is the very real, very real concern amongst individuals, vulnerable people, charities, about the potential closure of the cheque scheme itself. And cancelling the cheque guarantee scheme is surely just the first nail in the coffin, isn't it? It lends weight to this determination reinforced by a board that's made up virtually only of bankers to get rid of the cheques which are an inconvenient and costly part of their business and yet the lifeblood for many elderly people and charities. Well, that is why I've said actually that, that apart from Ireland, no other country in the world <coughs> actually has such a scheme and, a, and, and therefore that the scheme is not uh, uh, relevant in terms of supporting a cheque system. So you don't agree then it's that... Two different issues. But two you, don't, different issues. you don't then agree that cancelling the cheque guarantee scheme will lead to a reduction in the, in the usage of cheques, therefore making it more of a self-fulfilling prophecy? Only 7% of cheques actually today uh, uh, are, are covered by, by the... Is yes. it 7%? Covered by the guarantee. Only 7%. Uh, and the, the analysis that we did... Uh, showed that a vast majority of those will switch either to people accepting without a guarantee or they'll switch to cards, and it's only a small proportion of payments would then go to... Can I, can I just add that actually in those cases where the cheque guarantee card is used, that covers about 7% of all cheques in issue. But in fact, some analysis that banks have no, done I was is that a number of customers use the cheque guarantee in areas where they've got used to using it but where it is not <coughs> actually valid. So they use the cheque guarantee where a cheque is put in the post, there is no validity. They use the cheque guarantee where a cheque is given to another person, another individual can't benefit from the guarantee. So that analysis has shown that overall less than 1% of all cheques is actually covered by the guarantee. Okay, well, I'd, I'd still say again to you that it is a nail in the coffin for cheques. Can you also comment on the fact that the Charity Finance Directors Group um, has expressed great concern that many of their member charities have been told by their banks that cheques will be Thank coming you. out of service? Um, can, I, can I say that this is an issue they've raised with us? We have a charitable and voluntary sector liaison group under the Payments Council, which meets on a regular basis, particularly on these issues, because we've identified the charitable sector as one of the key sectors we need to be involved with to ensure there are effective alternatives for them. They've mentioned this to us. We've mentioned that back to the banks. We are sure the banks will take that on board. OK, well, may I suggest that if your board was expanded to include charity sector workers and um, representatives of the elderly, you might actually get a more balanced view of how necessary checks are. Uh, well, Thank can, you, Chairman. Can, can I come back on that? Because uh, it's, it's part of the DNA of the, of the Payments Council is consulting, uh, can consulting all groups. In the last, last year, we consulted over 300 groups. This year, 
we've already consulted over 350 groups. And by groups, organisations, I mean whether it's charities, whether it's small businesses, whether it's clubs and, and social, social clubs, uh, representatives of the, of the elderly. Our whole emphasis is on understanding the needs of the consumers of payment systems. Well, Mr North, that may be so, but the yep. fact is there's a massive amount of misinformation out there for which the Payments Council needs to take some responsibility for doing something about. I mean, the, the, the key issue is that we haven't got our message across that we have not made the decision to close. close. And I accept that, and I regret that. And, and, and in fact, I, I, I don't think we'd be having the session we're having now if that message had gone.